One more thing about maximum inertia is that sometimes in the problem you're given something called radius of gyration. Okay? Now that's <clears throat> kind of a common thing um, in the kind of handbook um, and sometimes you're given this thing called K, radius of gyration. Um, and what it means is that you take a shape, okay, let's say this thin plate, okay, and we condense it down, okay, you squeeze it, okay, this whole mass and this size and shape, squeeze it down into one little single strip, okay, and this strip has exactly the same mass moment inertia as the original shape. So, in both cases, the mass and inertia are the same, and the distance between this horizontal strip and the x-axis is called k. Okay? That's exactly what the rate of the gyration is. Okay? So, the equation now becomes the moment of inertia okay, about some axis, in this case the x-axis that we're interested in, equals mass of the object times radius gyration squared. Okay? So, using that, <coughs> applying this uh, to this thin plate okay, about the x-axis, so that gives us mk squared by definition. It also equals to the definition of the mass of inertia of our x axis for this original shape, which is 112 mv squared. So, going through a little math, you find that k is equal to about 0.3, okay, about one third, a little less than one third of the feet, the height, okay. So, take the height, okay and take one third of it, that's about the distance of k. Okay. So, that's what k means. Okay? These two cases, they're equivalent. They have the same moment of inertia. Okay? So, some problems, you're given k, and in that case, then things are much easier. Okay? So, you just use this equation to find your moment of inertia i, and that's all.